Good evening, I'm Don Fisher. A Kalispell man accused of killing a 15-year-old girl after driving drunk into her house appeared in court today. After just over two hours of deliberation, the jury found 31-year-old Emmanuel Gomez guilty of murdering his 26-year-old girlfriend last December. We are seeing unprecedented voter turnout here in Missoula. Lines have been forming throughout the day, and there have been some very spirited voters. It's a historic day in Montana as President Donald Trump makes his third visit to the state, which will be the first time in 64 years that a sitting president has set foot in the Garden City. But like they have all season long, the team picked up the slack for another injured player. But crews continue to put up braces on either side of the building to try and save it as originally intended. Dragas was charged with the murder of his best friend Joe Tash in 1997. He was convicted after a lengthy deliberation in a 1998 trial, but continually maintained his innocence. As coach Bobby Houck looks to pull a 180 schematically, he says it all starts with recruiting. I take an in-depth look at the team's latest signings. What's sweeter than one new calf? Well, how about three? For this week's Montana Ag Report, Evelyn Schultz spoke with an utterly shocked rancher in Whitehall who explains why a recent attention-grabbing birth is a family first. A Montana Highway Patrol trooper shot in the line of duty will be welcomed home as a hero. Good evening, I'm Don Fisher. Trooper Wade Palmer left Montana under the most dire of circumstances, fighting for his life after being shot three times near Evero. Many have anxiously awaited the news of his recovery and return, a time which has finally come. When seconds count, the police are minutes away. The psychology of survival is having some sort of a plan. And if you haven't practiced a plan or know a plan, then typically when that crisis happens, you won't do anything. Missoula Police Officer Mark Putty and other law enforcement professionals from the department, along with the Missoula Sheriff's Office, put all 1,500 plus Missoula County Public School employees through this crisis training, so they are prepared for the worst. Officers and deputies put them through several tests like personal defense, weapon identification, and crisis simulation. Putty helped develop the training when the school district found a need to be more prepared. There was a need recognized to bring safety training to personnel in the Missoula County Public Schools and it really started out on the heels of Sandy Hook uh, Elementary School after that shooting. We figured out that uh, what we really need to do is roll out this training to the employees about um, what to do in case of a crisis. On top of this, Putty serves as a district school safety officer and works with schools to improve things like emergency drills and he enjoys the work. I like it because it feels like we are affecting real change. We need to change the way in which we do fire drills, the way we do lockdown drills, and the way we think about these threats that uh, are seen to be ever present, ever increasing in our society. No! Like all of us, Putty hopes these educators won't ever need to use this training, but he feels better knowing that they are ready. So we hope them to give them the skills and the ability to be able to do something to increase their survivability, not only just for them, but for our kids as well. How do you figure out the area of in Missoula, Don Fisher, MTN News. Our top story tonight, a man is accused of murder after officials say he shot another man to death in Corum this morning. 19-year-old Martin Chandler is being held on a pending deliberate homicide charge. One person burned to death after becoming trapped in a car fire in the Flathead this weekend. Flathead County Sheriff Chuck Curry says the 911 center received a report of a vehicle fully engulfed in flame in the woods near Lion Lake in the Hungry Horse area around 5 p.m. Saturday. A 22-year-old man has been arrested in connection with a report of multiple shots fired in Kalispell around 7.30 tonight. Flathead County Sheriff Brian Hano warned people to avoid the area of Valley and Willow Glen Drives and set up roadblocks while deputies staged near the South Kalispell Fire Hall. And with so many great stories emerging from this year's state wrestling and swimming tournaments, it was hard to pick just one to feature in this week's youth sports spotlight. But when you do something that's never been done before in state history, well, that's hard to overlook. In the 113-pound class, a cool story here. Billings West's RJ Low Dog had his lower legs amputated short shortly after birth, but he's tied with Great Falls' Austin Shoup late in the third until Shoup finds a takedown to win it 4-2. to two. And February has been a month to forget for the Lady Grizz, going 2-6 and six so far, but they hope to end the month on a good note tonight at Weber State. The Lady Grizz came off a strong performance against Montana State Saturday, and they look to keep that momentum going tonight. Pick it up in the third, Mackenzie Johnston gives to Haley Nicholson, who hits a cutting Maddie Schoening for the two, 
47-39 Wildcats. In the fourth now, Laren Brooks shoots the three and gets the friendly roll to extend their lead 74-59. A little bit later, it's Shoning who answers with a triple of her own. Grizz down 14 now. And late fourth quarter, it's Brooks again who puts a great move on Johnston and gets the tough floater to fall. The Grizz were only down two going into the fourth, but it's all Wildcats late as they take this one 89-73. to it's way too early to determine which of this year's recruits will make some noise in their careers or even see the field this season. But there is one recruit in the most recent batch of signings that is already getting praise from his head coach. Defensive end Milton Mamula played his high school ball in Newtown Square, Pennsylvania, but he has Montana ties. His dad, Mike Mamula, played with Coach Houck's brother, Tim, in the pros. And Milton is already getting compared to a former Grizzly great. Turning now to weather, a potent system on the way with heavy mountain snow possible tomorrow and Wednesday. And we do have some winter weather highlights to talk about as well. Here's Chief Meteorologist Aaron Yost with more details on that. While all of western Montana has seen heavy snow this month, the Bitterroot has simply been in the bullseye for this week's storms. A good old-fashioned winter storm is headed our way this weekend, which could make for some tricky travel conditions after a mostly dry week. For more on what to expect, let's toss it over to meteorologist Russ Thomas, who has a look at our first forecast. There you go, sir. Thanks. You're welcome. This is Robbie and his mom, Robin. Robbie has been overcoming obstacles his whole life, and due to a rare combination of diseases, doctors didn't know if he'd ever walk, let alone live. But here he is overcoming that, and now he and Robin look at their next challenge. Recently, they were selected to be recipients of a service dog from Four Paws for Ability. To ease the financial burden on the nonprofit, the Claussens have agreed to raise half the cost of dog training. Firefighters call it one of the most difficult calls they respond to. High-rise fires require more manpower and careful plan to knock down the fire and get victims out alive. Battalion Chief Derek Mullins says this practice drill utilized 16 men, which is about as many firefighters that are typically staffed at one time for the whole city of Missoula. For the patients at Mineral Community Hospital, Wednesday is their favorite day. Why? Because that's the day that therapy dog Stormtrooper comes to pay them a visit. It's just been great. It's, it, this worked out. It's awesome. Uh, the residents love animals, and Stormtrooper, he just lights up now when he comes in. Oh, you have well, thank you. <laughs> We're a strong organization. We will make it through this, but the sad part is that adults with disabilities in the Missoula community across western Montana are going to feel the impacts. Where do you think you would be without opportunity resources? Um, maybe on the streets. I don't know. Henry Jensen, I'm a police officer here with uh, Missoula Police Department. Josh Falinkity, I'm a patrol deputy with the Sheriff's Office here in Missoula. So I knew at about 15 or 16 years old that I wanted to be in law enforcement. I uh, graduated from Frenchtown, starting my career in 2009. Originally from out of state, uh, North Pacific Northwest. Uh, one of the things that drew me into this field is the spont spontaneity of it. I like uh, being able to serve um, having rank and structure, the paramilitary lifestyle, um, and to do something different every day, which is what law enforcement, especially patrol work, entails. One call you could be helping somebody that reminds you of your grandmother locate her vehicle in a parking lot. The next minute could be a, um, a challenging situation between lovers quarrel, uh, and then it's not uncommon that we're off looking for a child that's lost in a neighborhood or um, you know, hasn't been seen in several hours. The biggest calls you'll go to will be on a Sunday or a Monday. It's not the stereotypical Friday, Saturday calls that keep us busy. Even people that often seem difficult to deal with, um, I, I found the challenge and the satisfaction still uh, finding a way to meet their needs and, and come up with solutions. There's a lot of behind the scenes thing that goes on that most of the public wouldn't know, but there's a lot of work that is uh, important work, and I guess I'm just proud to be a part of that. It's really easy to get caught up in the negative perspective of things, because so many of the situations that we meet people in are difficult times for them, and sometimes become difficult times for us. One of the challenges for me is a home life. You know, you miss a lot of holidays, Christmases, birthdays. You need a good support system at home. Luckily, I have that in my wife and my family, and they all understand that I can't be at every function, even though I want to. The opportunity to help somebody out, that really inspires me to continue going out there and maintaining a hopeful attitude at the same time. 
there's been some stuff caught on camera that hasn't looked good for law enforcement. Um, some of it can be explained, some of it can't. Um, I hope that the people that need to be held accountable have been held accountable. I just ask people to remember that that is a very small percentage of the population of law enforcement. And um, there's a lot of good folks out there trying to make a difference and trying to do the right thing. Despite what's going on in the rest of the country, I feel confident about doing what I do as a profession. And I think that Missoula is a place worth doing it. Folks out of the community stepping up to um, even just say hello, smile and wave, uh, say thank you. And we appreciate that. I know we may not always show it or say that we appreciate it, but we do. And um, having that community support has been, it's been re, uh, refreshing. Definitely motivates me to uh, provide better service and uh, uh, continue to make this a good place for them to live too. Now less than two minutes to go. Here's your dagger. Johnston to Shoning in the corner, buries the three, and Montana moves on to play another day as they beat Sacramento State 87 to 80. Walker Anita grabs the rebound and attempts the putback, but he is rejected by both Stanswison, and he passes to Logan Gilliard, who finds Anders Epperly, who spins and hits an open Chase Chapius, who nails the jumper from the corner. And ask any team who's ever tried to do it. It's never easy to repeat as champions. Tonight we feature the Missoula Lady Bruins hockey team for this athlete of the week who did just that, and their players will tell you that they took everyone's best shot this season. There has been a lot of controversy surrounding the Trump administration's decision to separate families at the U.S. southern border. With all the opinions and finger pointing on both sides of the aisle, there have been a number of issues raised regarding how President Trump's policies differ from former administrations. KPAX's Kent Lutzen reached out to one of only four immigration lawyers in the state to help answer some of these tough questions. Authorities have identified the person who was fatally struck by a vehicle in the Mission Valley over the weekend. Lake County Sheriff Don Bell says 20-year-old Aiden Finley of Pablo died as a result of the hit-and-run incident that happened Saturday around 10 a.m. on Highway 93 south of Polson. I used to live just where these things were landing and taking off on Long Island, and uh, so I always, always wanted to fly one someday. Todd would go on to fly helicopters during the Vietnam War, while his wife Carrie came to see this plane for a different reason. I like to come because my dad was a career Air Force, and I was an Air Force brat and grew up literally living in houses along the flight lines. This B-25J bomber used in World War II is one of about 10,000 that were produced. Also known as the Mitchell, this plane is in Missoula as part of the Flying Legends of Victory Tour put on by the Mesa, Arizona Air Force Base as one of 40 stops the plane will make this summer. Hosting this week is the Museum of Mountain Flying next to the Missoula Airport. Museum Director Stan Cohen says seeing the rare plane is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Of course, we want people to come that have never been here before just to know who we are and spread the word. But it's also an educational thing, and there's just lots to see out here. It's a good experience. Kids love it. The Mitchell is described as a fast, muscular aircraft made famous by the Doolittle Raid bombing of Tokyo in 1942, an attack on Japan following the bombing of Pearl Harbor. But it's also known for its appearance in the film 30 Seconds Over Tokyo. It's wonderful, and I think a lot of people should try to get out here and see it because it's history. It's real history. In Missoula, Don Fisher, MTN News. While 64 competitors stood on their paddle boards, Here we go, guys. Two were brave enough to do it sitting down. Mike Donahue and Joe Stone are the first two disabled paddleboarders to finish the Sup Cup, Montana's first paddleboard race. The 4th of July celebration at Fort Missoula started in 1976 to celebrate the country's bicentennial. The event featured everything from live music to local vendors to horse-drawn wagon rides. Senator Tester says this fire is one of many examples of the cost and resources that are needed to keep communities safe. As temperatures begin to warm up, residents may be looking to the water for recreation. Missoula fire officials say that's fine if you know what you're doing. For others, the Clark Fork's fast currents can be very dangerous, but the department says they're ready for the worst. Once a month, they train on what they call high-risk, low-frequency calls, which vary depending on the time of year. In this scenario, the red ball simulates a victim drifting downstream. Responders use the jet ski to recover the victim.
In a meat market like this, finding a love connection takes a bit of creativity. This Tutter app tries to save trips across the country for those searching for their better calf. Farmers across Britain are using the new app to choose the best breeding partners for their cattle. And Tutter runs on the same concept of a dating app like Tinder. You swipe left for no or right for yes until you make a match. But unlike other dating apps, choices are made not just on looks or personality, but science. Profiles reveal how much milk a mate could produce and its protein content, along with the animal's breeding potential. Tutter's goal is to unite sheepish farm animals with their soulmates, and breeders say in this case, you really can buy love. In Missoula, Don Fisher, MTN News.